Now, I don't know why this is in bad news. This should be in really, really, or in good news. This should be in really, really bad news. But it was on this day in 1717 that King Frederick William I inaugurated a compulsory school system in Prussia, the first national education system in Europe. Yeah, Jim's going, oh, crap, why is this in the good news? He ordered all children ages 5 to 12 to attend state schools and later financed the construction of hospitals along with more buildings to educate the youth. His reign was a successful one in so many ways. Now, for anybody who cares about freedom, you go, wait, forcing kids into a government education system, that's not good news. And what's, what's the result of this? Now, proponents of government and apologists for its programs will say, but look, reading rates are up, literacy, because in it, and yes, you can just like, like, like with NASA, right? You could, you can steal from the entire American population, right? And take a bunch of, you take all this money and you can put a man on the moon and go, look, we put a man on the moon. Isn't that amazing? If it wasn't for government, we want to put a man on the moon. Well, okay, maybe that shouldn't have happened yet, right? Maybe those resources should have stayed with the American people. And instead of, you know, having all the poverty that we've had between then and, and you know now, like maybe we'd have people more enriched altogether and you'd have a voluntarily funded private space system that would have put a man on the moon and on Mars and on Venus and on Mercury by now. But instead, we have the government program holding us back with the misallocation of resources. So you might say, oh, my okay. God. And, and you could actually prove probably in some places that compulsory government schools has been good for literacy. But at what cost? Should those kids have been staying at home, helping their families feed themselves? Did starvation go up as a result of this? So just back to the story of King Frederick William I of Prussia, who and this is why we call this a, a Prussian school system, cemetery row seating, compulsory education, government mandated curriculum. After ascending to the throne, the new king sold most of his father's riches and declined to use the straight treasury as his personal source of wealth the way previous German princes had. By the time his son, Frederick the Great, became king, he had assembled the most efficient and best organized state in Europe, as well as its third best military. So if you like the military, you could say, yes, let's have compulsory education. This was good. If you think, if you think war is good, if you think death is good when it's conducted by the state in mass numbers, right? You know, mass murder of war, like then, then yeah, you go, wow, this is good news. Look, look at King William, King William the first. He was able to build a giant military because he had forced education. But Frederick brought nearly a quarter century of peace to a poor country, guiding it into a recovery following war and a devastating plague. Now, what, what, that war, that, was, that wasn't a government. That was just, it was just a natural phenomenon. That war. The plague, on the other hand, oh, that was caused by government, right? No. Well, why was there, why, but why was the plague devastating? Same reasons that we're seeing the devastation under the pandemic today. We brought you this story just a couple of weeks ago, looking at the historical analysis of the European plague. And well, that was a, a plague of a much more real, actual devastation, you know, causing scale in and of itself. What we brought you the story of was the economic analysis that, yeah, surprise, surprise, the monarchs of Europe during the time took advantage of the crisis to make the rich richer and the poor poorer. He provided for the peasantry a newly improved condition and freed the serfs completely. Now, just, it, was this a good development that we, we got away from serfdom in Europe? Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying serfdom was bad, but I'm saying serfdom was good and we should have you know stayed with serfdom. Obviously, no. But what? Wait, 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 you're 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 free now. You're not a serf living on land. That, well, no, I still technically own the land because I'm king. But we're just you're not going to be a part of this feudal system anymore. You're just we're we're, we're going to make you part of the the Prussian system now. So you're free, 
as long as we get your kids' minds to educate and propagandize them to get them to join us in the third strongest military in the world, representing a relatively small country. So obviously we're talking about a highly militarized regimented society now. I would hardly call this progress, even though, yes, freeing serfs, getting away from serfdom, that's, that's good. Education, that's good. Literacy, that's good. Forced education by the state in order to support a militarized society, not so good. By the end of his autocratic but thoughtful reign, reallygoodnewsnetwork.org, that's that's your... I mean, what is, what is the, a reign of a tyrant, of a king? It is, I own all this territory, and if you don't do what I say, we kill you. So let me, let me just, I got, I'm going to have to translate. I didn't think goodnewsnetwork.org was going to make me translate to, to the actual news from their status version of good news. But like, just, just a comparison during his, I mean, it's like saying during the brutal, but thoughtful murder, the king had fashioned the Prussian government into the most honest and efficient in Europe. <laughs> right we just we uh, we can't convince you to send your kids to our government run schools we honestly have to force them into our propaganda machine surprise surprise now i i actually like the conclusion here the observation that the pen is mightier than the sword has sometimes been attributed to him and as his reign proved, propaganda is more effective than brutality in controlling, manipulating, and exploiting your citizens and convincing them to join a military to direct their brutality outwards, that you may conquer and grow your empire and expand your influence. I think the legacy of brutality and imperialism of King Frederick William I and even his son Frederick the Great is abundantly clear.